Hey, it's Rachel Cook, your modern mentor. And today is your lucky day because today's episode is all about how to be luckier. The secret? Well, it turns out you make your own luck. Let's talk about how you can do it. On our fifth wedding anniversary, my husband and I took a trip to Napa Valley, California. We were attending this big event that was being hosted by our favorite winery out there. There were tons of people there. And as we schmoozed our way around, we quickly came to realize that we may have been the only ones who had traveled across the country to be there. And we had shared this fact with the winery when we registered. Anyway, that day they held a raffle and the grand prize was a magnum bottle of a high-end wine signed by the winemaker herself. It was pretty coveted. And out of hundreds of entries, my husband and I won the bottle. We felt so lucky. Only years later did I come to realize that raffle was definitely rigged. I just know it, in my bones. They were never going to randomly pull a ticket from the hat. No, they were going to reward someone for putting in the effort to be there. It just so happened to be us. Do I believe in random good luck? I do. But most of the time, I think luck is not a thing that happens to us. It's a thing we make happen, actively. So if you're ready to lean in to being one of the lucky ones, then let's get you off the sideline and onto the field. What do the luckiest people do, not just at events centered around adult beverages, but in their professional lives? Well, here goes. First, they say yes to more things. There is so much focus today on maintaining boundaries and protecting your time and being better at saying no. And these things do serve us to a point, but they can also limit our exposure to new things. Say no to the things you already know you don't enjoy, like the meetings you don't have anything to add to or the parties with people you already know and don't really love hanging out with. But sometimes say yes to the unknown or the I wonder, or the what even is that moments? Because really, you never know. During grad school, I took a crazy unpaid internship with an entrepreneur who was almost bouncing off the walls. On paper, it made absolutely no sense, but I was intrigued and I took a chance. Oh, also, I met my husband there. The job was fun, but my life was changed forever and for the better. I know, a little gaggy, but I'm sure glad I leaned in. I speak at events, I say yes to networking introductions, I read books, the list goes on and on, but I take on things that may make no strategic sense, but every now and then, something really meaningful, and some might even say lucky, emerges from these long shots, so I take them. I don't take on more than I can handle, but I challenge myself to say yes for no reason sometimes, because you never know. Next. Lucky people see the whole story. Longtime CEO of McDonald's, Ray Kroc, once said, I was an overnight success all right, but 30 years is a long, long night. I love that quote. As you look around and you see all the lucky people, take a beat and ask yourself, what did they do to deserve those outcomes? What groundwork did they probably lay to be in this lucky position? I'm willing to bet there's some hustle hiding in there. I was recently coaching a client on this. She was bummed because a peer of hers had recently been promoted and was now her boss. At the start of our call, I caught my client dropping the L word, you know, lucky. But when I really pushed her to think about why her colleague might have been chosen over her, she was able to identify a few things her colleague had been doing that she hadn't, like posting thought leadership on LinkedIn several times a week and taking online courses and sharing tidbits of insight with their teammates or networking pretty proactively with colleagues in other parts of the business, and, you know, letting people know that she was hungry for a new opportunity. With an honest look, not just at her colleague's luck, but the actual steps she had taken, my client is now working on crafting her own luck in a more proactive way. Next, lucky people watch out for luck. There's this English psychologist named Richard Wiseman, who's done some pretty compelling research on the subject of luck. In one experiment, he made appointments to meet with a handful of different people, one at a time, at a coffee shop. Some of these people had already self-identified as lucky, while others had identified as unlucky. Then prior to each meeting, he placed some money on the ground just outside the coffee shop. When people would arrive for their meeting, it was the lucky ones who were more likely to have spotted the cash. The unlucky ones, not so much. 
The takeaway is that sometimes luck just doesn't happen. It requires your eyes to be open, to be looking for it, expecting it. It may just be lying on the street in front of you. So take a look around you. Maybe your boss has dropped a subtle hint about looking for someone to lead a project or supervise an intern or start an employee interest group. How open are your ears for these cues? Don't wait for the official invitation. Look for luck in the subtleties around you. And finally, lucky people see luck in the rear view. Stephen Hawking was a world-famous physicist who suffered and ultimately died from ALS. He once famously said, I was lucky to have chosen to work in theoretical physics because that was one of the few areas in which my condition would not be a serious handicap. Personally, I don't think his choice of profession was what made him lucky. His choice to see his choice as luck was the thing that made him lucky. In other words, lucky people are lucky because they can look back on their days, their months, their choices and decision points, and they can find luck in them. The more we see luck behind us, the more we expect ahead of us. I'm a big bullet journaler. I used to maintain a gratitude list within it. Some people love that, but for me, that practice felt kind of forced. So I've replaced gratitude with a section I call daily captures. And here, I just capture moments throughout the day that literally felt like lucky moments. How lucky that I sent that reminder email to the prospect who's now a client. How lucky I showed up for my kid who actually needed me but was afraid to ask. How lucky I checked in with my dad. He was feeling a little blue today. Rereading my captures at the end of a night or weekend always reminds me not of the luck I had, but of what I created. And it primes me for the day or week ahead where more luck is sure to be hiding. How lucky for you that you chose to listen to this episode. Now please go make something happen. I hope you'll join me next week for another great episode. Until then, you can follow Modern Mentor on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Check out my website at leadabovenoise.com or follow me on the Modern Mentor podcast page on LinkedIn. Thanks so much for listening and have a successful week. Modern Mentor is a quick and dirty tips podcast. It's audio engineered by Dan Farabend with script editing by Adam Cecil. Our podcast and advertising operations specialist is Morgan Christensen. Our digital operations specialist is Holly Hutchings. Our marketing and publicity assistant is Davina Tomlin. And our intern is Brendan Pika. Pika.